how you respond to a situation will determine whether you grow or whether you go backwards. Whether you grow into spiritual Christian or you go backwards into carnal Christian. Okay? And he says here, strong meat, okay, you're going to grow, belongs to them who are full age, those that are mature, even those, now what is Paul's definition of maturity? Those who by reason of use, in other words, you're doing this. You have your senses, your physical and even your spiritual senses of understanding exercised to discern both good and evil. So now, how do you know good or evil? It's because you're doing the word of God. If you just, listen, you can go anywhere and hear scripture spoken. Most churches, well, used to, most churches would at least read scripture. Nowadays, not always so much. But used to, you would go and hear scriptures at least spoken. And if you heard it spoken, then but you don't do anything with it, then you would just keep hearing and not doing, and you didn't learn about anything. But as you started doing the word of God, now you're having your senses exercised. You're going, oh, okay, I can see this. I know this now. Say, so you start laying hands on the sick, nobody's going to come and tell you, well, healing passed away. Why? Because you're doing it. See, once you're doing it, you can't be fooled. That's the beauty of it. Now, if you're not doing it, any you know, good talker can come along and make you believe something. And what does that mean? That means you'll be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. They'll come in and tell you this, come in and tell you that, and you'll believe it. Why? Because you've got no way to prove it true or not true. Somebody comes in and says, well, here's why healing does, it doesn't exist anymore. Here's why God doesn't heal anymore. And it's because he's trying to teach you something because he's more concerned about your spiritual being, you know, that you've got to grow up uh, than he is about your physical being. And, and you go, well, that makes sense. Well, yeah, if you don't have your senses exercised to discern between good and evil. But see, when you have your senses exercised, how? By doing the word, then you realize healing is good. And staying sick is evil. But it's amazing how people say it. <clears throat> I've even had people ask me before, should I cast this devil out of this person? I, I've said, why? Well, because if they don't line up, you know, then it's going to come back seven times and they'll be seven times worse. So wouldn't it be better if I just leave them with one then leave them with seven more? But see, see, that reasoning makes sense from the natural, but it doesn't make biblical sense. Why? Because biblical sense says set them free. Get this thing off of them. Disciple them. Now, if you're just going to go, all right, be free, uh, be delivered. Yep, okay, now go do it, live however you want. Well, yeah, yeah, you're leaving them open to whatever. You're, that's like having a, a newborn baby and just sitting it outside and saying, well, you know, if God wants it to live, it'll, it'll live. No, that's not the way you have to nurture it, right? And raise that child. Well, it's the same thing. You get somebody delivered, you've got to disciple them. You've got to work them through. Discipleship isn't always easy. Hence, the term comes from the word discipline. It takes discipline. It takes the time to go in and actually exercise these things and do this. And Don't do that. No, you're going to do this instead. And if you do that, you're going to go back to the way you used to be. And you don't want to go back to that, so don't do that. Do this instead. As a matter of fact, you do that one time, this will come back. You got to do this 50 times to make sure that doesn't come back. And so you get them disciplined, discipled into living the right way. Now, 